السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلا هادي له يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك ولعظيم سلطانك سبحانك اللهم لا أحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وقليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وتركها على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كان هذه لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ونبيك محمد وعلى أزواجه أمهات المؤمنين وذريته وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين كما صليت على إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبعد فيا عباد الله اتقوا الله أوصيكم ونفسي المخطئة المذنبة بتقوى الله وأحثكم على طاعته يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم واخشوا يوما لا يجزي والد عن ولده ولا مولود هو جاز عن والده شيئا إن وعد الله حق فلا تغرنكم الحياة الدنيا ولا يغرنكم بالله الغرور All praise be to Allah our creator, sustainer, and cherisher. We bear witness there is no deity worthy of worship save Allah, and we bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and last messenger. We ask Allah to bestow his blessings, peace, and mercy upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad wasallam, his household, his companions, and all of the believers and his followers till the end of time. My dear respected brothers and sisters, fear Allah, and maintain God consciousness for Allah has warned you in the Quran by saying O people fear Allah and pre- be prepared for a day 
when no parent would suffice for their children nor a child would suffice for their parents do know the promise of Allah is the truth and do not be swayed by the world matters and do not be swayed by the shaitan my dear respected brothers and sisters one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Abi Am Sufyan ibn Abdullah al-Thaqafi once asked the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam a question and said Ya Rasulallah قل لي في الإسلام قولا لا أسأل عنه أحدا بعد Tell me something or give me an advice about Islam so I don't have to ask anyone anymore after you. A question basically that would summarize the entire deen would serve as a guidance, as a principle for him to live upon for the rest of his life. And obviously, for anyone who would maintain the footsteps of the Prophet والسلام, and his companions. What would you ask the Prophet والسلام, if you were given that chance? This person, when he got close to the Prophet والسلام, when he found the right opportunity, the opportune time where he could use it for something special for him, this is what he asked. And this is how he benefited himself and benefited the entire generations and ummah that came after him till the end of time. And if this was the question, what would, what would you expect the answer? The Prophet والسلام, summed up the entire Islam, gave him this advice. And remember, that would be sufficient so this person would never ask anymore. Meaning, if you apply it, that would be it. A reason for success and prosperity in this dunya and in the hereafter. Four words what the Prophet ﷺ have uttered by saying, قُلْ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ استقم. Say, in Allah I believe, then persevere. Everyone, each one of us, have would have ups and downs in their lives, in their mood, in their financial status, in their relations, but more importantly, in the state of their Iman. Sometimes they're up, they feel they're close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and sometimes they're down. Ramadan comes, they feel the motivation, they're energized. Ramadan departs, they're back to the state of oblivion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They listen to a khutbah or to a talk and they're recharged again. And then that zeal fades away and it's constant ups and downs. This is exactly what the Prophet والسلام, has described in the hadith. أَلَا إِنَّكُ لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ شِرَّةٌ وَفَتْرَةٌ Everything has shirra, a phase of energy. But make, make no mistake, that's what the Prophet ﷺ. Associated with that shirra, with that state of energy, there is a state of fetra, meaning calming down, laziness, and somnolence. And the Prophet ﷺ tells you, warns you, قَالَ فَمَنْ كَانَتْ فَتْرَتُهُ إِلَى سُنَّتِي فَقَدِ اهْتَدَى And whoever, when has the state of somnolence, that fatra, the down phase, when you're going from a peak to a valley, 
Whoever maintains my sunnah, meaning adheres to the basics of the sharia during that time, it is those who've truly been guided, who've been giving the guidance, the hidayah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why when the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam advised that companion by saying, once you have that iman, you declare your iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the beginning. And the important part that follows after word is the perseverance. So you maintain the straight path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, avoiding the ups and downs and avoiding the swings and the extremes in your iman by being consistent, persistent, perseverant, and this is exactly what the Prophet ﷺ is saying that to test yourself is that when that state of energy fades away, is test yourself and see where you are. Are you truly still adherent to the path of the Prophet ﷺ? Then if that's the case, you know that you are on guidance. And otherwise, then you need to work on it. My dear respected brothers and sisters, everyone seeks something to energize them, to motivate them, to increase their Iman, to give them that state of Iman high. But what's more important that you seek that generator becomes from within, becomes intrinsic. It's an engine that has to become inside you that moves you and make you an influencer that affects other people rather than just being influenced and affected by others rather than just waiting for someone to give you a word of advice that brings you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the right people as the prophet alayhi salatu was salam has described are those who become a generator for energy, a generator for Iman that overwhelms who are around them, becomes an outpouring energy that affects everyone who sees to them and talks to them. And this is what you need to seek. This is your goal as a Muslim who seeks the guidance of the Prophet For that reason, the Prophet summed it up. You become a mu'min, and you persevere. Allah has described it subhanahu wa ta'ala by advising the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam فَاسْتَقِمْ وَمَنْ تَابَ معك. You persevere along with who have repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that ayah is the ayah as should be called the ayah of a transformation. The verse of a transformation that truly summarizes the entire psychology of a human being and how it functions. It begins with a tawbah, the moment of making the decision to change and then maintaining that change. And that's your most important lesson to take home for any process of a transformation, you have to start with a beginning point. That beginning point is what Allah called in the Quran as a tawbah. For tawbah is not something you commit a sin. You ask Allah forgiveness, He forgives you. Allah forgives everyone. Allah does not make it one of His attributes just to torture people for the sake of torturing them. It's a discipline. But what he's indeed is capable of for giving all people's sins, no matter how they are. When Allah said in the Hadith Qudsi, if your mankind and the jinn kind, from the beginning of time till the end of time, committed all the sins possible, even if it reached heavens, Allah does not bother him to just forgive all these sins. But what he truly wants you to do more than just being forgiven, is having that penance, having that tawbah. And the essence of tawbah 
is the beginning of a change. And that the change should not be transient, should not be episodic, and should not be temporary. It should be permanent. It should endure throughout your life and carries on till you pass away and you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is pleased with you. And that's why the Prophet والسلام, was ordered by Allah. This is the advice indirectly given to us that you start with a beginning, with a point that is the tawbah and then you persevere. You maintain that status. And that's how you avoid the ups and downs. And then the Prophet والسلام, realizing the nature of a human being and they realize that we are subject and inclined to change and the qalb, the heart is always constantly trying to change. وَإِنَّمَا سُمِّيَ الْقَلْبُ مِنْ تَقَلُّبِهِ The heart is, it, is called qalb because it keeps shifting. It comes from the root alteration. It keeps altering. It tends to flip back and forth. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ asked you that to keep that fact in mind and said, Saddidu wa qaribu. Just like when you're aiming at a target and you try to get close to it. You keep it in mind, and this is an important thing, that you have to be mindful constantly of what your destination is. What your goal is. And qaribu. Keep getting close to it. Trying to reach that destination and trying to hit that target. And if you miss an exit, you go back to the main road. And if you err the first time, you try again. And you never give up till you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's in a sense what the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam meant by saying, in Allah yaqbalu tawbat al-abdi ma lam yugargar. Allah does accept the tawbah. And as we define tawbah is an attempt to change. Allah would accept that effort from you so long you have a breath moving in your chest. So long your soul does not depart your body. Meaning, you never give up, you never quit, and you keep trying and attempting going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala till the last moment he allows you in this life. And so long he permits you to exist in this dunya, that means he still accepts your effort and you don't give up and you don't quit. And if you did not have the chance to have that complete and perfect change, then Allah will reward you for the intention, for the sincerity, for having, making the effort and the attempt. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Sometimes, the intention of the believer can be even better than his actual deed. Why? Because it is so associated with sincerity and humility and was not contaminated by the vanity, by the arrogance, by showing off, by being pretentious, and by seeking someone else besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's a lesson of us that you always keep trying to change, to become that perfect Muslim that Allah expects you to be, and you never give up till the last moment, and you never know when that last moment is going to be. And that's exactly what the Prophet والسلام, reflected in the hadith that we always quote. A beautiful hadith. إِذَا قَامَتِ السَّاعَةُ وَفِي يَدِ أَحَدِكُمْ فَسِيلَةٌ فَإِنِ اسْتَطَاعَ أَنْ يَغْرِسْهَا فَلْيَغْرِسْهَا If someone is holding a bush, a tree, a plant, trying to plant it, and abruptly, the day of judgment takes place. Which is the physical destruction of the entire world, which is your life is gone and you're not going to 
exist anymore. And even if you did not exist, the entire world did not exist. And there is no meaning for any effort to do for, towards this dunya. The Prophet ﷺ tells you that the state of Iman necessitates that if you're able to complete that work, do it. Why is that? So you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're on a state of obedience, following his guidance, having the intention to do something productive, having the intention to do something good, having the intention to change positively what surrounds you, and having the intention to have positive impact on humanity or on the world and the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And back again to summarize my dear respected brothers and sisters, it is the beginning of the change that is the tawbah. And it is the path that you take afterward and that is the istiqama, that's the perseverance and that is the transformation. When scholars spoke about tawbah, they analyzed it. And he said, asking Allah for forgiveness, admitting that the path you've had in the past is something wrong, and it needs to be changed. And having a resolute decision, fully determined part, that you're never going to go back to that history, to that past. It's behind. And then, attempting with all effort, wholeheartedly, to seek the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's exactly what we need to do. Besides just saying astaghfirullah. As a matter of fact, Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu anhu used to say, those who utter just astaghfirullah fast and rapidly, that's nothing but an indication, a sign of a tawbah, repentance of a liar. For the tawbah is more than just words and letters to utter. More than just a state to invoke, it's the state of the heart. It's the state of the mind that is associated with the determination and resolution for a change. And this is the pursuit that everyone should undertake. The Prophet ﷺ, and he was the master of all reformers, told us what it takes to do that change. And we need to analyze that and benefit. And he mentioned to us the story, the famous story of the person who had committed so many crimes in his life. And he asked the worshiper, after killing 99 people, would Allah accept his tawbah? And he said, no. So he killed them to make it a hundred. And the, then he went to a alim, to a scholar, and asked him if he would be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if his tawbah would be accepted. And the answer was to the affirmative, of course Allah accepts all people and accepts the tawbah, the penance of his sincere worshiper. But he made a condition. He said, Obviously, after quitting all the bad deeds, all the evil work, said, you reside in an evil town where you're surrounded by people who commit sins day and night. For your tawbah to be accepted, you have to move to a different town. Surrounded by righteous people where the environment is conducive to doing what's good. The Prophet والسلام, when he told that story is not just telling you an anecdote to enjoy. It's not just an anecdote to show you how Allah is forgiving and merciful. We already know that. But he's giving you a tip that
that for the tawbah, the beginning of a new life, the change to start, and more importantly for the transformation process to be completed, with its perseverance aspect of it, you need a change of the entire environment. This is why this person was ordered that he needs to move to a different place, to a different town. And that's, my brothers and sisters, that's what it takes for a true transformation to happen. It takes a resolute decision for a lifestyle change. To change the friends around you who put you under a lot of pressure and the peer pressure as we know is one of the most important factors that influences people's lives. It might take that sincerity to change. That person, if he had not moved to a different town, his tawbah was not, a, was not going to be accepted. On his way, as a matter of fact, he died, passed away, and yet Allah accepted his tawbah. And as you know in the hadith, he ended going to paradise or will be going to paradise. Why is that? Because he had already shown Allah the sincerity and the truthful intention to make that change in his life by changing the environment, by agreeing to move. And that's what it takes you. It's not sufficient just to say astaghfirullah and I'm going to change without making the necessary changes in your life. That could take moving closer to the masjid, to, to the source of knowledge. That could be changing the crowds that you hang out with. That could change making serious modifications to your job where you have enough time to learn, where you have enough time to spend with your kids, where you have enough time to spend your, with your family and to seek the knowledge. That might take a serious change where you can modify your entire day from the moment you open your eyes and wake up to the moment you go to bed. If you spend your time till 2, two o'clock and 3 o'clock in the morning watching movies, serving the net and doing this or that, even reading, and then you miss out on doing Al-Fajr on time or in Jama'ah, then that needs to change. This is the tawbah and if you don't make the change then you have not even started that departure point beginning of your transformation let alone maintaining that perseverance that's what tawbah is for the transformation to happen is the radical sincere resolute change in all what you do in life so you can live up to the standards of your beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the guidance of Allah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our tawbah and allow us to transform to the best state that he would like us to be at. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum faya fawza al-mustaghfirin astaghfirullah. لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ونبيك محمد بعدد كل معلوم لك وبعد My dear respected brothers and sisters a few words the advice of your Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Learn them, memorize them, and teach them to your children, pass them on. As a guiding principle, as a divine law on how this life should be lived. This hadith, as a matter of fact, is one of the Nawawi 40 collections, which he considered the core of your faith. And now you understand why. It has that significance. 
and why it is one of the most salient hadith that the scholars emphasized. قُلْ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ استقم. Say, I believe in Allah and then persevere. That's the transformation. That's the tawbah, the beginning of it, and the path of perseverance that you take till you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر لنا وتب علينا وخذ بنواصينا إلى ما فيه رضاك عنا اللهم إنا نسألك فعل الخيرات وترك المنكرات وحب المساكين وإذا أردت بعبادك فتنة فنجنا منها غير مفتونين اللهم لا تدع لنا ولا لأحد من عبادك المسلمين ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرشته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا مبتلا إلا أعنته ولا حاجة هي لك رضا إلا قضيتها ويسرتها برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم تب علينا وسائر المسلمين توبة نصوحا وردنا وإياهم إلى دينك ردا جميلا ووفقنا للصلاح والصواب في القول والعمل والنية يا أرحم الراحمين وصل يا رب وسلم على حبيبك وحبيبنا سيدنا محمد سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصرفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة